Well, welcome to another episode of Christian Answers for today. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and I'm going to be leading you through a conversation of contemporary issues in our world today. And today we're going to be talking about the movie, The Martian, that has come out at theaters over the nation and around the world, actually. And it deals with the scenario of the United States sending people to Mars and then there is a difficulty on the planet and they blast off but they have to leave one of their own on the planet they think he's dead they think he is a casualty of a storm that came up on Mars and so they leave him for dead only to find out that he's alive and I don't want to give away too much of the movie, but the movie's been out for quite a while now, so I don't think that I'm spoiling it for anybody who really wanted to see the movie. And maybe even some of the conversation I have will spark an interest in people who didn't even want to see the movie and might want to see it now. But I liked the movie, I appreciated the movie, but there are definitely signs that this is a secular movie. It's signs that it is a attempt to live life without God, which is exactly what our society is trying to do, attempting to create a society and a, and a community without God. And so this movie is just another example of that trend. And so what happens is this man is on Mars and he has to survive on Mars with limited resources. And he does survive, but he has to try and work out every single possible option that he has on Mars and the curious thing about what he does is he does it largely based on his own knowledge his own training his own skill and very very little in respect to looking to God for example through prayer through faith in God's promises in the Word of God we don't see any kind of devotion to God we don't see any kind of interaction with God except perhaps in one spot again I don't think I'm spoiling it for anyone who wanted to see this movie it's been out for weeks and weeks and so hopefully this is not going to ruin the movie for you but like I said before he is on the planet Mars and he's out there alone and he only has enough food for 30 to 45 days or so and he so he works it out he works out how much food he has left he works out how much water he has left and he comes to the conclusion that he's going to have to figure out everything in order to survive he's going to have to figure out how to make this work and so what he does is basically cleverly figures out a way through his own logic and reason and experience and knowledge he clear, cl logically figures out a way to survive on Mars and if you can imagine Mars is a desert basically a desert without an atmosphere a desert without rain ever you know even in some deserts there is occasional rain but out there on Mars there isn't rain at all in the sense of water uh, rain there is some kind of uh, rain but it's not H2O it is some other kind of element so he has to figure out how to create water he has to figure out how to grow crops to create food he has to figure out how to survive and he does that he actually does that but again the theme running through there is that man by himself can figure out how to survive man by himself doesn't need God to intervene in any of these things because man has it within himself to do that now a lot of people have not analyzed the movie in this perspective but I I take that perspective that this is an example another example just one of many examples coming from Hollywood about the secular theme that man on his own can do whatever he needs to do to survive he doesn't need any outside intervention he doesn't need any outside help he doesn't need God he doesn't need the supernatural he doesn't need prayer 
He doesn't need a divine revelation from God in the Bible. He doesn't need anything. He just needs his own ingenuity, his own ability, his own giftedness, his own intelligence, and he can solve any problem that he faces in life. And that is the humanist creed. That is the secular humanist creed. And that's what we see today coming mostly from the government, but it's coming from the educational field. We see it in the schools. It's taught to the children in the public schools. Wherever the government has influence, this secular theme is dominant in our culture. But it's even coming into the general culture now, and it's even seeping down through to the common man, and it's also coming into the churches too. So we're seeing a general secularization of our U.S. Uh, society happening before our very eyes. And this movie is an example of secularization. Um, we see the main character uh, depending on himself because there's no one else there. Uh, and he's depending on his own human ability. And the subtle message there is that man can do what man needs to be done whatever it, the glory of man that's the classic definition of humanism that's what the enlightenment began to try to communicate back in the 16 1700s uh, 1800s when this enlightenment philosophy arose uh, flowering in the 1800s um, it came primarily at first from Europe France and Germany and then it spread across the Atlantic Ocean to the North American continent we see many of the founding fathers had drunk heavily from the Enlightenment philosophies and were somewhat skeptical and uh, were not Orthodox Christians and so we see this human ability human thinking can solve our problems we don't need any outside intervention we don't need a God to help us we can uh, chart our own course and then we can fulfill our own dreams without God. Now the official humanist manifesto you might have heard that's simply an intellectual statement, a document that very few people pay attention to but it really summarizes the humanist philosophy and it basically says we don't need a God out there to save us, we can save ourselves. That's the theme of this movie, The Martian this astronaut who is on Mars has to save himself in a sense uh, in the physical sense in the material sense he has to save himself or else he will die and we see him going about his task of survival largely uh, almost a hundred percent without any reference to God now there is one reference to God in the movie that I noticed and I want to talk about that in our next segment but this first segment, I just simply wanted to introduce this movie to you and the theme of the movie, which is basically that man by himself can save himself and all he needs to do is channel his intelligence, channel his ability, channel his skills, his experience, and he can solve any problem. And we saw that, for example, in the statement by the late President John F. Kennedy, where he said there is no problem that man creates that man cannot solve. Again, that's a humanistic kind of a statement because from a biblical perspective, from a Christian perspective, there are plenty of problems that man can create and actually cannot resolve. And they need God Almighty to resolve them. Primarily the chief problem we have that we cannot solve ourselves is the problem of sin. If we don't uh, repent and turn away from sin and receive Christ as Savior, we will die and be judged and be sent to eternal punishment. Now that's nothing we can solve as human beings. We cannot solve our sin problem. We must turn to God and God alone and he, only God can save us from our sins. And so that's an example, a prime example of how humanism is a failure as a philosophy and as, and as a faith. And so it will fail spiritually, it will fail materially, it will fail in every instance ultimately. But this movie is a portrayal of a man trying to survive on his own without any divine intervention. And that is the theme of the entire movie. Now I want to talk a little bit about 
what happens and the one reference to God when we come back in the second segment of Christian Answers Don't Go Away. Welcome to part two of Christian Answers. We're here analyzing the movie The Martian that's been out at the theaters for a number of weeks now. It's perhaps been out there about a month, and so um, I figure that anyone who really wanted to see that movie has seen it already, and uh, uh, there might be some people that want to wait and see it on DVD, and this might be a spoiler for them that might give the movie away, and I hope that that doesn't happen in your case, but maybe uh, hearing about me talking about it will help you to be more interested, and you'll, you'll see the movie anyway. But what I'm talking about is the theme of the Martian movie, which is a common theme in all of Hollywood. We saw another science fiction movie called Interstellar, and that came out this past year, uh, 2015. And it too was based heavily on the humanistic, secular humanistic theme that man can solve the problems that man needs. And in that case, there was a problem with Earth. Earth was becoming uninhabitable, so they had to figure out a way to launch rockets off and explore other habitable planets. And they utilized a so-called wormhole and transported these astronauts into another uh, a galaxy, not a galaxy, but a solar system, and they found another planet that they could live on. But that theme was also secular and humanistic. It was all centered on man. There wasn't prayers to God. There wasn't a uh, reference to the Bible. There's no reference to church uh, or faith or anything like that. It was all just man creating the world that man lives in and man needing only man to create that world. And that's a popular theme in the scientific community. There, it's, that doesn't mean that all the scientists that practice science are secular humanists. It doesn't mean that they're all atheists. It doesn't mean that they're all skeptical unbelievers because some of them actually go to church, some of them actually read from the Bible, and some pray, and some profess Christianity. What it shows, though, is that there is indeed a secular humanistic bias in the science and the fields of science and this comes largely from a practical concern uh, the practical philosophy is that we want to try to figure things out by ourselves we want to try to figure out how things work without any reference to an outside force and if we can do that then we will understand how nature works the problem is when you take that into a philosophy beyond the natural evidence, then it becomes more of a religion. And for a lot of these scientists in the scientific field, um, secular humanism is their religion. They believe that man is the highest apoch of creation. And they believe that we, humanity, are the highest order of being in the known universe and so we're the highest we're the greatest we're the best we're the smartest and, and in that worldview humanism man is on the top but in the biblical worldview God is clearly almighty omnipotent omniscient and he is the number one being he is the number one authority and he is the one that we need to worship not ourselves not our own ability not humanity and so it's a whole different orientation to life if you look at this whole life as centered on humanity you will come out in a different place than if you look at all of life to be centered around God and that's the Christian view that God is at the center of everything not man and when you pursue the humanist vision you come out at a different end and the results than you do when you pursue God as the center of reality. And in the humanist view, there is no ultimate right and wrong and ultimate morality because, of course, man decides what's right and wrong for himself. So he can change it. He can decide what he wants to make right and what he wants to make wrong. And this is exactly what happened in the communist regime in Russia for decade after decade. The Soviet communism would create a policy of what was deemed right and what was deemed wrong 
and what was wrong was an enemy of the state and if you were on the wrong side of the enemy of the state you were persecuted and you could be killed and you were killed and there were millions of people who were killed because they were on the wrong side of the government in its creation of morality well that's the humanist vision in a centralized government form but here in the United States we have it more democratized it's mostly everyone making up their own morality on their own making up their own vision and purpose of life on their own and that's another aspect of humanity so uh, uh, humanism so you have the Soviet communist vision which is a centralized government humanism and then you have the democratic humanism that we have here which is more individualistic and everyone makes up their own rules individually but it's all humanism it's all centered on man and it all ignores God well in this movie the Martian there is one reference to God but unfortunately in the context it's a negative reference and so on the one hand the Martian the man who was left behind the astronaut who the other ones thought was dead and so they had to blast off during a violent storm on the planet Mars to save themselves they left their fellow astronaut there and they thought he was dead and lo and behold he was alive and so in his habitat on Mars he began to realize that he had to create water to grow plants in his his habitat there and so he needed to find a source to create water and one of the ways that he could do that was burn uh, a certain chemical element and he had to burn this I believe it was hydrogen and he had to find a way to burn this and he had to find something that was flammable and now what the astronauts had in their habitat was not flammable because they didn't want any kind of fire to occur in that habitat so everything that they brought up there was flat fire retardant it was not something that would catch on fire easily and so he had to search in the personal items and the personal effects of all of the astronauts who had left really quick in their personal belongings to see if they could find anything that had been brought on board the habitat in on the Martian surface that was flammable so he could burn it and what he found in one of the astronauts personal belongings in their personal space was a crucifix a cross and Jesus Christ on the cross so evidently one of the astronauts was a believer in Christ and brought a crucifix uh, popularized mostly today in the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church they have the crucifix Protestant churches tend not to have the crucifix Christ on the cross but whatever uh, denomination this astronaut had left the personal effects on the planet Earth, uh, Mars this other astronaut the one trying to survive looked at it and he said I hope you don't mind but I'm going to have to count on you and what he was saying was he was having to use the crucifix because it was wooden he was gonna to have to use it for as something to burn to create water to survive on the planet now the question is was he looking at the crucifix saying I'm going to have to rely on you meaning I'm gonna to have to rely on Christ the real Christ the risen Christ to get him through this and was it a declaration of faith that he spoke or was he looking at the crucifix and the man on the cross Jesus and saying to the cross and the man on the cross I'm gonna to have to count on you to ignite and burn and produce the water that I need because I need something to burn this uh, element on the surface of Mars to create water I don't know what he was trying to say but he was probably there was probably a little bit of both I don't think this man was totally an atheist but he could have been but if he was it was a tongue-in-cheek talking to Christ saying I'm gonna count on you to burn um, or if he was a believer of sorts in some way 
then he was trying to say to Christ in somewhat of a spiritual way, a very small, minor, minute spiritual way, I'm going to have to count on you. And if, he, if that's what he meant, then that is the whole extent of any reference to God in the whole movie, which is pretty lame. But uh, at least there was at least one reference to God in the whole movie. Well, I wanted to speak to that point in the second segment, but don't go away. We're going to be back for the third and final segment of Christian Answers. God bless. Welcome again to the third segment of Christian Answers, and we're talking about the movie The Martian. You might have seen that movie. It's been on the uh, movie theaters for a month, at least a month, maybe more. And it's about a lone survivor on Mars, all alone on the whole planet. There's not another human being on the whole planet. He is stuck in this enclosure, this habitat, where his crew and himself were working until this dust storm and this planet storm rose and they had to blast off because their spacecraft, their escape spacecraft was in jeopardy of breaking up so they had to blast off from the surface of Mars and on their way back to their spacecraft uh, one of them got blown away because of the windstorm and he was tossed away from the area that they were in and they could not get to him and they had to get into the ship and blast off without him and they assumed that he was dead well what happens later is that they hear that he didn't die and they decide that they want to go back and they want to rescue him so they make a return trip and I'm not going to tell you the end but I will say that the whole movie basically is a depiction of this one astronaut trying to survive on the planet Earth and what makes this I believe unrealistic even though it is a secular vision and a humanistic vision and that's the way our society is heading I do not believe the average person in society is as secular and as humanistic as this movie portrays this this man and I think the average person would pray the average person who does identify with Christianity in some sense that's the that's the reality in our country most people, the majority, and I would even say the vast majority right now, still do identify with Christianity, identify as a Christian of some sorts. Of course, there are a wide range there. There are people who identify with Christianity very nominally. They're maybe a part of a church. Their name is on the rolls of a church membership. But they haven't gone in years and decades. They haven't opened the Bible in decades. They maybe haven't prayed in years and years. And they, their faith really means very little in their life, but they still identify as Christian. And then there are people all the way in between. And then there are people who are very strongly committed. They pray and they read their Bibles. And they sincerely and honestly try to follow the teachings of Christ. And they know what salvation by faith alone is. And they attend church. And they really do try to practice the faith as outlined in the Bible. And then you have, of course, on the far other end, you have atheists, skeptics, and outright unbelievers in our nation. But see, I believe that the typical person, if he were up on Mars alone, that would be praying to God. Uh, as they say in war, there are no atheists in the foxholes. I think in times of stress and tr trouble and tribulation, people tend to reach out to God and so I think the typical person would have prayed I think there would have been a Bible somewhere up there because I think somebody would have brought one um, and I think there would have been an attempt to interact with God as a reality and as we saw in the movie there was really no interaction with the Almighty by this astronaut outside of that one reference uh, sort of ambiguous reference. We don't know if he was actually talking to Jesus when he was looking at the crucifix or whether he was talking just to the crucifix and sort of making a joke of it, saying to, to the man on the cross, I'm going to count on you because he needed to use the wood of the crucifix to light a fire to create the water 
to water the plants. So it was kind of a, a reference that we don't really understand it, whether it was sincere or whether it was tongue in cheek. And that, sadly enough, was the only reference to faith, God, and any kind of prayer. And so we have to conclude that The Martian, as a movie, as a whole, is a humanistic statement, as was Interstellar wasn't a humanistic statement. And it shows you our culture, and it shows you our secular trend, and it shows you where we're going and progressing. If you look in Europe, the Europeans are ahead of us in their secularization. The churches are empty on Sunday morning. Faith is very dim in Europe as a whole. Um, there are pockets of Christians, and there are pockets of energetic, committed Christians in Europe, in Great Britain. There are pockets of Christians, but the general trend is a secular humanistic society in England and in France and in Germany and all of the other countries and even some of the stalwart uh, Eastern European nations that have a high percentage of active Christians, for example, Poland, even there since the fall of communism there has been a secularization of even Poland and we see the uh, diminishing of the Christian activity there. So we have to say that uh, this movie is sort of uh, symptomatic of our entire culture. Now what we as Christians need to do is not follow that cultural trend. We need to buck that trend. We need to go against the tide. Win our movies, win our television, win our newspapers, when our educational system, when our government is going in that secular direction, we need to stand against it and we need to stand personally against it in our lives. We need to not allow our lives to be secularized, not allow our families to be secularized, and then we need to resist this trend. It's not a good trend. It's not a healthy trend. It's a damaging trend. It's a harmful trend because it will send souls to hell, ultimately, spiritually. It will create chaos morally in our culture. And as Christians, we need to stand as the sole light bearers in this culture. We are very vital and important for the survival, not only of our culture, but of souls. And so we need to stand strong. We need to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. And we need to not succumb to this secularization that is taking place in our culture. And when we stand strong, Christ will be with us to help us and give us the strength to do that. Well, I hope that you've been uh, encouraged and informed about uh, this issue today, and we'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.